Black Friday sales were down. In-store sales were down. And for the first time ever, internet sales were down since they started keeping records. Now, I've waited a while before I posted this video because I wanted to do a lot of reading, a little research, and there is a general consensus that Black Friday's sales were down. However, they're not the same stuff. But overwhelmingly, everyone understands that Black Friday sales are down. They're down from last year, and there's even an estimate that Black Friday sales were the worst in 70 years or Black Friday sales were down 70%. Now, this is a signal that we're starting to return to the real economy. Now, why is this a signal? People don't have money. See, this, this is one of the things that during the fandom economy, let's talk about the fandom economy. During the pandemic, the CARES Act created the phantom economy. Now, what was the phantom economy? The CARES Act gave people who were unemployed an additional $600 per week, which is $2,400 per month. And for many people who were the benefits of this surplus of this uh, stimulus, that was more money than they ever made in their life. So this created hyper segmentation in the market. And with that flood of stimulus money, it created a phantom economy, uh, an economy that wasn't real. And it is taking about two years for all the stimulus money to come out. And now we're starting to return to the real economy. One of the persistent problems, I've got to turn off two cars today that I'm having with my rental car business is people being late. This did not happen in the beginning of the rental car business. This is something that happened uh, the month before, last month, and this month. And it's a persistent problem because right now people are having to deal with making money and being able to support themselves and pay their bills. And this is a signal like we're going to see what I predict in 2022 is the economy is going to continue to revert back to the real economy. Understand once again, like my last video, talking about the five economies, the primary economy, the secondary economy, the digital economy, the stock market economy, and the black market, the criminal economy, you're going to start to see a lot of people shifting to the digital economy because it just makes sense. And you're going to see a lot of people shifting to the criminal economy. And you're going to see the primary economy continue to be deleveraged. You're going to see a lot of job loss in certain sectors. Understand right now that we have a lot of small businesses who depend upon low wage labor. They're struggling right now because these people don't want to do those jobs. But as we move out of this phantom economy and back to the real economy, there's going to be a lot of pain. There's going to be a great deal of pain because one of the things that's going to happen is you have to understand with the phantom economy and the hyper segmentation of certain markets, like take Toro, people were making crazy money on Toro. That's now gone. Um, you, as we move to the real economy based upon real marketplace fundamentals, because this is one of the things, uh, this black, this uh, depression in black Friday sales, is going to hit the stock market economy. It's going to hit the primary economy. It's even going to hit the secondary economy, but not in an adverse way because people don't have money, right? When I was in the storage auction business, I was in the storage auction business at the beginning of the Great Recession and my sales went up. So what you're going to see is a lot of this money that was going toward the primary economy. It's going to start moving toward the secondary economy because people are going to be looking for deals. They're going to be looking for deals on furniture. They're going to be looking for deals on cars. They're going to be looking for deals on everything. And this is a signal that we're starting to move back to the real economy. Now, once again, um, you've got to understand what is going on. Because if you're in that 
mindset, and we're gonna talk about this because mindset, there's a lot of mindset videos. There's, there's one video, how to manage your money like the 1%. And I see a lot of videos that speak upon mindset and the adapt to, adaptation and the mirroring rich people. But here's the rub. And this is one of the most frustrating things for me. How are you going to manage your money like the 1% when you don't have 1% money? Like, I'm about to tell you a little story. Let's say you make $30,000 a year and you're really good with managing your money. You're really good. You don't carry any excess debt. You don't drive a, you don't have a car payment. You drive a car that's paid off. You don't have any credit card debt and you manage your money to the best of your ability, right? You're only going to be able to invest three to 400 bucks per month. And that's in a best case scenario. So you can manage your money like the 1%, but you're not going to get the same results because you don't have 1% money. This is something I consistently see. Uh, I call it feel good YouTube because these guys, they're so positive and they're full of energy and enthusiasm and like, you can do this. And then you see the comments, it's like, hey, thanks for putting out this video. This is something I'm gonna work on. Yet they don't have 1% money. They don't have it. And why am I speaking about this? Because during the phantom economy, many people felt rich. They felt rich. They didn't have to worry about their home being foreclosed on. They didn't have to worry about being evicted from their apartment. They didn't have to worry about the repo man coming in the middle of the night to take their car. Because in the phantom economy, we were in suspended animation. We were suspended from real market force, marketplace dynamics and marketplace uh, activity. And with that suspension of real marketplace dynamics, we got away from real time repercussions. See, once again, I've, I mentioned this before and I'm gonna mention it again. I used to be in the military and the military will only let you take so much leave because after say 90 days, you would lose your military bearing. And let's go ahead and take an average person who was working, who wasn't making a lot of money and then you put them in this bubble, let's call it a bubble, where they got an additional $600 per week. They didn't have to go to work. They didn't have to pay their mortgage. They didn't have to pay their rent. And this didn't go on for a month or two. This went on for a year. And in some cases, some of these people have been in this suspended animation state for going on two years. Once again, you got to go back and you got to look at your, your grandfather and your great grandfather and great grandmother. Granddad did everything. Granddad did the heavy lifting. Granddad paid the bills. Grandma didn't have to do any of that stuff. And when granddad passed on, grandma was in trouble. She needed help doing these things because she never had to do these things. Right? So because these people have been in the suspended animation economy, and they have lost their military bearing, so to speak, they're in many ways kind of incapable and helpless once real marketplace forces start to reactivate. And this is where the pain is gonna come in. Because a lot of these people, because I, I, I've seen you know, the, the great resignation, uh, all of these people are quitting their jobs, and I was watching a piece that was talking about worker burnout. And one of the things that, that really caught my attention, because even one of the commentators brought it up, it's like, well, many people would say that these people were wusses and they were weak. And they, you know, and that, that was my first thought because as we move toward the real economy, that's gonna require higher skill sets, that's gonna require a work ethic that's like, all the people who are making 150, 200, 300, and 400, and 500,000 a year, they're not playing around. They're working because I have a friend 
who went for, and was in banking and she went from $150,000 a year job to a $300,000 a year job. And her life changed. She began working seven days a week. She was working so much, her husband was complaining. So once you get to that level and that level of income, you cannot be a normal person with a normal work ethic. It's just not gonna work. So now you have a large segment of the society that has lost their work ethic. And all of it, there are plenty of jobs. There are plenty of high level high school jobs. There's just not enough people to fill these jobs. So the jobs are available, but the average person isn't prepared to do those jobs. And this is some where more of the pain is going to come in. I think that 2022 is going to be a very painful year economically for a lot of people because one of the things that I am seeing, and this is illustrated by the depression in Black Friday sales, because once again, there's pent up demand. There's people who want to do stuff. There's people who want to spend money, right? But they don't have money. They don't have money. And a bigger part of this is they don't know how to make money. Yesterday, I did a free training talking about getting your, your, your financial foundation together with the five checking account blueprint. I may upload it here. Um, one of the things that you have got to understand, and this is something that I have been preaching and preaching and preaching, you gotta get your financial foundation together. You've got to get yourself out of debt. And one of the reasons that a lot of people could not take advantage of the Black Friday sales, and also something else I noticed. I remember a few years ago that on Thanksgiving day, a lot of stores would open up. That didn't happen this year. So the stores knew there was gonna be a decline in sales activity. They knew this. They, and this is one of the things. Many stores have what's called predictive analysis. And with this analysis, they can predict what the general population is gonna do before they do it. So I feel that the Target, uh, Best Buy, all these stores, have crunched the numbers and it's like, it's just not going to make economic sense to be open on Thanksgiving day. And with the, you know, this is online sales. Once again, online sales, this is the first time online sales have dipped since they've been keeping records. And a strange thing happened in store traffic was up, but sales were down. So you had a lot of people window shopping, a lot of people looking. So, from my research, there wasn't as many deals, Black Friday deals as normal. Like, I didn't do any Black Friday sales this year. I didn't do any Black Friday sales last year. Uh, one of my thoughts about the Black Friday sales, like, you know, I sell a course for you know, like 2,500 and then on Black Friday, I cut the price in 50%. I just, I don't, you know, I feel that that devalues your, your offering. I feel that devalues your course. And another thing is that many of the stores that used to be open on Thanksgiving, I think that they're permanently not going to go back to being open on Thanksgiving. Because one of the reasons I don't do Black Friday sales and stuff, because I, I did it, I played around with it a few years ago, but I just don't like the messaging that it sends that, hey, you know, you were a fool to buy this course before Black Friday. That's the messaging that it sends. And that's one of the reasons that I don't do Black Friday sales. Um, but yeah, we're starting to move back to the real economy. And there are many people who are not gonna be prepared for this move back to the real economy. They're not gonna be prepared for all of the things that are getting ready to happen because once again, low wage jobs, you know, working in a restaurant, working at a car wash and stuff like that. Those jobs are hurting right now. These people are struggling to find people to do the work because these people who were in a state of suspended animation, they were living with mom and dad. They didn't have to worry about the repo man. They didn't have to worry about the consequences of not paying their bills. 2022, the consequences of not paying your bills 
is about to come back. And it's gonna come back with a vengeance. It's gonna come back with gusto. Because right now, many people are in a state where they are trying to adjust to what is going on, what is happening. And one of the things that I am beginning to see is that people are not ready for this new economy. And this is why I started a new YouTube channel called Pure Money. It's gonna, it's gonna be dealing with the economy. It's gonna be dealing with how to do YouTube, podcasts, writing books and stuff, and intellectual property. Because that's where it's going. That's, you know, all signals indicate that everything is running to the internet and one of the things that I like to do is watch YouTube ads. And I like to watch YouTube ads and see how long these ads run. Because uh, there's one guy, he's got an ad that's been running for months, which means he's making money. Because if he wasn't making money, he wouldn't keep running ads. And I see a lot of ads that will run for a short period of time and then disappear and you will never see them again. And I feel that a lot of people don't know how to run ads. They'll go ahead and create an ad and put something up and hope it works out. So this is going to be a skill set in the future. If you know how to create and run ads, let me tell you, that's going to be a million dollar skill. If you know how to create and run and manage ads, that's going to be a million dollar skill. If you know how to create ads, that's going to be a million dollar skills. I have friends who literally get paid a million dollars to create an ad and then get additional money to run the social media uh, spend on it. So th these are going to be huge, huge opportunities for people who are, who are who can think, who can actually sit down and do what they need to do in terms of building some stuff. Because if you've noticed, I've not really been pushing a lot of my products because I'm getting ready to revamp, rebrand everything. Like once again, Hustlers Kung Fu, which is used to be Savage Finance. Now that's Hustlers Kung Fu. And what I'm going to do in the month of December is move a lot of the Savage Finance videos to the new um, you know, personal capital channel. And I'm going to create more content. So December is going to be a really, really busy month. Because one of the things that I have learned is you can create what I like to call waves of money. You could put up a course, write a book, do a podcast, do something and create a huge wave of money. And I'm preparing for my next wave of money because, man, there is so much opportunity out here. And once again, once I get the masculine frame built out the way that I want to. So I'm gonna be working on that really hard in December. That's gonna be a perpetual course that I can sell. Because once again, I'm not building this course like how to get money, how to get chicks. That's not the purpose of this course. It's how to be a masculine dominant man. And you know, the next training session should happen today. And one of the things, because once again, I am going to wrap the channel, do, do what I did with my first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand that when you participate in the digital economy, it is not quick money. It's not quick money. It is something that you have to put together. It is a sustained and uh, long term effort. And once again, this is where the lower social economic strata fall short because I've noticed something. These people love TikTok and what is TikTok? Do some research on what TikTok does to your brain. TikTok rewires your brain and this is how it works. You watch a TikTok video and you get a hit of dopamine in the head, right? So to get another hit, you go to another TikTok video because I've seen it. Many people will get to TikTok and they will fall down what's called a TikTok hole and they will watch TikTok video after TikTok video and spend a lot of time on the platform. That's what TikTok wants. But what it is doing is destroying your attention span. It is literally decaying your attention span. It's reframing, rewiring your, your brain 
where it make, it's gonna make it harder for you to sit down and pay attention. And this is what the new economy is gonna require. The new economy is gonna require you to have a very long attention span to do focused and concentrated work to build projects to set things up. So essentially, if you are consuming a lot of TikTok, you're essentially destroying your money-making capability because you're reducing your attention span. I know a lot of people love it, but once again, this is why I don't really participate in TikTok. I don't watch it. Uh, it's not, I will never do a TikTok channel because here, here's something else too. You get a lot of people who want attention at any cost. And this is why, you know, YouTube has gone through several phases. It's gone through uh, the prank phase. It's gone through, you know, uh, I think there was this the Ace family and essentially people are watching, consuming content that is entertaining. And that's what the vast majority of YouTube is. It's about entertainment. But when you start to get to educational and learning videos and educational learning content, those channels don't have as many views as the entertainment channels. And here's the thing, the educational channels is what's gonna make you money. The entertainment channels is what's going to keep you poor. And this is one of the things that I'm consistently seeing in this economy that people are looking for escapism, people are looking to be entertained. And also, this is a very significant fact. In 2020, the murder rate rose 30%. Why did that happen? Domestic violence skyrocketed. Why did that happen? Because people were put in this position where they had to relate to other people. And because these people don't have good social, uh, social skills, uh, these people have rage issues, people have low impulse control, domestic violence and murder skyrocketed. Now in 2021, as people started to get out and the economy started to kind of go back to normal, these things came down. But once again, I predict if what it's going to happen is the murder rate is going to go back up in 2022. Why? Because we're going to start experiencing real economic stress, real pressure. Like, you know, I, I had some people comment about the uh, supply chain shortage, which I believe has been manufactured. And this guy says, I'm a longshoreman. We make more money than that. So you, this is like $150,000 a year job and people are not going to work. That don't make no sense. That makes no sense, whatever. You could get a $150,000 year job without a degree and you're not gonna go to work? I, I don't see that, I don't see that. So once again, we're starting to the primary economy, which has been a phantom economy for about two years, is now deleveraging and is moving back to the real economy. And this Black Friday sales thing is a huge signal, huge, first time ever since they've been keeping the numbers, Black Friday internet sales went down. First time ever. And we're gonna see more of this downward activity in 2022. In 2023 and 2024, I feel that we will be back to the real economy and this will impact all of the economies. It's gonna impact the primary economy adversely. It's gonna impact the secondary economy favorably because people are gonna be looking for deals. And it's going to elevate the criminal economy and it's gonna elevate the digital economy. Because if you've noticed, one of the things that I'm getting ready to do, and this is something that I've not formally done, I am going to formalize Mac Daddy Media. Mac Daddy Media is going to be the production company for all of my YouTube videos. And I'm getting ready to do a few things a little different, add a few, few other things into it. And I'm getting ready to standardize and do some stuff that's gonna be really, really different. Because when I move all of the videos from what used to be Savage Finance to now Personal Capital, because that's, that's my project for December, and that's a lot of videos. Uh, probably take me three months to move all of those videos over there. 
And then what I'm gonna do is also build out new content on top of that. And as what I'm doing with this channel, like this channel is about the broader economy and uh, issues going on. And this is working really, really well. And once I get um, Hustlers Kung Fu the way that I want it to, and then I get personal capital, then I get the Lost Kings, and then I get pure money. Pure money, I feel, is going to be for people who have long attention spans. Because once again, you know, I, I created this YouTube channel. I worked on it full time for six months before I made a penny. And when you tell someone that, they're like, because once again, people who who were used to working are used to I'll put in 40 hours, I'll put in 80 hours and I get a check. And the digital economy doesn't work like that. Uh, there's this chick. Her name is Catherine Manning and she has a successful YouTube channel and her first year First year of putting up content, she did not do that well. She's made many pivots and stuff. So on that pure economy channel, I will be talking about all things digital economy. And with Hustlers Kung Fu, I will be talking about business formation because like yesterday, I feel really, really good about the uh, training that I did yesterday because everyone is trying, I hate this quote, securing the bag. Um, once again, I don't feel that that is representative of what you need to be doing because, all right, you secure the bag. You get a you get a, an allocation of money, right? I believe in creating durable and sustainable business models that put money in your pocket month after month after month after month, not quote securing the bag. I, I, I just once again, I hate that phrase, but one of the things that I have seen with the lower economic strata is the trunication of everything. These people want to use a nickname or they want to, because they, they cannot have the intellectual capacity to maintain frame and to do it in a proper manner. Because like, you know, going back to this video, how to manage your money like the 1% without having 1% money, I think is foolish. I think, all right, all right, you, once again, use my example, you have $30,000 a year and you manage your money like the 1%, but you're not going to get 1% returns. You're not going to get 1% results because you don't have 1% money. And this is a big, big thing. I made a video at Hustlers Kung Fu talking about low time commitments and low money investments for big paydays. These things do happen, but they don't happen frequently. Like I have been the benefit benefactor of spending a little bit of money and making a lot of money several times in my life. But once again, if you look at my activity level, I bought like by myself 1500 storage units and part of a, a team, maybe 500. And out of those 2000 storage units, 36, maybe four were extremely remarkable which doesn't even represent 1%. 1% would be 200 units. Or would that be 10%? I'm not sure, I, I, my math is. But I'm trying to school you guys on foundational stuff. Because once again, I'm gonna do a lot of foundational training because if you get the proper foundation then you can build upon that. But if you never get the proper foundation, you're gonna experience, you're gonna go forward, you're gonna go backwards. You're gonna go forward, you're gonna go backwards. You're gonna go forward, you're gonna go backwards. But you build this solid foundation, you're just gonna keep going up and up and up and up and up. And this is something a lot of people don't seem to understand, especially, I'm gonna say the 100 million people, 120 million people in the lower economic strata because once again, you look at the behaviors, because going back to my car rental business, I consistently see the same behavior with problematic renters. The car is filthy, not dirty, filthy. The car comes back on E. I'm at a point where I don't even fill up the cars anymore. I just like have, if it's got a quarter of a tank, that's what I rent it out. Because I know invariably that 90% of the people who rent my cars are gonna bring it back on E. These people, 
have no conscientiousness trait. They get a car with a full tank of gas. It would, you would think that, hey, I need to bring it back that way. No. But once again, uh, I'm dealing with people in that lower economic strata. Why are they renting cars? Because they cannot afford to buy a car. So that's one of the things. And I'll be talking about that more because I'm getting ready to move all of the um, Kill Switch Chronicle videos over to Hustlers Kung Fu. So like I said, December is a busy, busy, busy month. I got a lot of stuff going on. I was kind of thinking about taking the last two weeks of the year off, but that's not going to happen because I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of things to put into play. I got a lot of things to do. So I will just pretty much be taking Christmas off. And other than that, I will be working this month. But guys, we're starting. The economy is starting to move to the real economy and we're starting to leave this phantom economy. And I feel that is good because as long as we stay in this phantom economy, it's going to create false narratives and these false narratives are going to induce some crazy behavior from people participating in the economy. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.